In this video, we're going to use a whole bunch of techniques to help you understand some deep lore about VFX in Fusion. If this is your very first day in Fusion, check out this video instead, and then come back here, you know, when you're ready. Let's go. Here's what we're gonna be doing. We're going to be making this comp. Is a lady on the subway with sunglasses on, or is it? Damn! No, she's sleeping. She's, she's totally asleep. She didn't have sunglasses on, all right? Those are fake. And we're gonna take a look at how it's done. And before anybody gets just crazy in the comments about the AI stuff. You could just, you could just do this with AI. In certain situations, maybe so, but there are a ton of professional techniques involved here that you're still gonna need to know even in a perfect AI world, all right? If you don't think so, well, why don't you just let me know through the magic of internet comments? Just helps with the engagement. Let's move on. First thing I'm gonna do is go up to workspace and I'm gonna turn off our show page navigation. That'll just give us a little bit more room here in the notes. And I'm just gonna walk you through how I did this. And then you can take these techniques and put them into your own stuff. First thing we're gonna do is start with our original footage. And some shots are gonna be easier than other shots. The reason this shot is pretty easy is because she's not really turning her head she just has her head basically facing the camera. She's just kind of doing this. And so that makes it perfect for just a good old planar track. So that's our first node, the media in. Oh, we're off to such a great start. Next, we have a merge. What are we merging, do you say? Well, let's go all the way to the top. We're gonna to start with sunglasses PNG. So this is just an image that I masked out the sunglasses. And a couple things to notice, we have these reflections here on the rim, which normally we would probably erase or clone or do something with, but I didn't because it's gonna be basically the same technique as I'm going to show you here in just like five seconds. The second part is we have these reflections here in the glasses which sure looks nice as a still, but if this is moving around and the reflection isn't moving, that's a dead giveaway. So what I did was took a couple of masks and applied them to a black background. Oh yes, mask that beezy. And now looking at this, I see one of them is fuzzy and one of them is not. Don't be like me kids, be consistent. But you know what, it works fine. And we're taking this and just merging it over the glasses with like an 85% blend. All right, so here's, here's full. Here's a little bit. I just did this just so we can get a little bit of lighting, the curvature and everything, even though it's not really realistic to do that, you know? It's not like totally the most realistic thing to do, but it's gonna work fine. And then I roughly placed the glasses on her head. Now, at this point, if we were to move this around, it's just, it's not, it's not exactly what we want. <laughs> it's just kind of stuck there. So it's pretty good on this frame, but you know, other frames be sucking, just sucking. So what I did was I took this original footage and I brought up a tool called Planar Tracker, like this. And then I just kind of drew a mask around her eyes, like sort of where a VR headset would go, right? Because this is virtual reality. And what this does is it just selects a bunch of points inside of this shape and it tracks them all at once. And so I went over to reference time and hit set and then tracked forward and it did some tracking, went back to go and then tracked backward like this, did some tracking. And now we have her face tracked. It's important to track as close as possible to where you're gonna stick something to the track because that's gonna be the most accurate movement, right? So that's why we tracked her eyes and not her mouth or something. From there, we can hit this little button, create planar transform. And what that'll do is make a little node called planar transform. This holds all of the movement data that we tracked and it's just like a transform node, but it's animated. And so anything that we run through this effect is going to have that same movement. Okay, so I took that planar transform and I put those glasses through the planar transform. And then I took this transform and kind of moved the glasses to where they're supposed to be because it will kind of offset it once you apply the transform to it. Not a big deal, just move it back. And something to mention that I'm transforming this before it goes into the planar transform. After the planar transform, you don't wanna scale things or move them around or anything like that or else it'll mess up the track. If you don't believe me, check this out. Let's put another transform there and let's just move this up like this. And look what's happening. Oh, it's crazy sauce. It makes no sense. I don't know why I'm talking like Foghorn Leghorn, but I am. <laughs> now who's responsible? I say who's responsible for this unwarranted attack on my person? So we don't want to do that. You always do your transforms and movement and scaling and all that stuff before your planar transform. That should be the last thing before your merge, okay? And so now it's doing a pretty good job. You know, it's, it's all right. We got the blacked out sunglasses. 
It's tucked to the face pretty good, but there are a few things to mention about this. One, which I already accidentally had turned on when I was explaining this, but you want to turn on motion blur. So you just select the node that you want to turn on the motion blur for, go over to settings, and here there's a tick box for motion blur, and check this out. That's going to add motion blur as it moves. Which again, if you don't have motion blur, that's a dead giveaway. So we put that motion blur on our planar transform, and now we have that moving around, it's looking a little better. Another thing, these glasses aren't quite the same color as everything else. They kind of stand out. They're a little bit too contrasty. They're a little bit kind of pinkish compared to the background and you know the black on the headphones and that kind of thing. And so we can use a color corrector to kind of blend that in a little better, make it a little bit cooler, change the contrast a little bit, and that helps just kind of sit it in the image. By the way, if you're color correcting something and it has an alpha channel like these glasses do, make sure on your color corrector, go over to options and click this pre-divide post multiply checkbox. If you don't, look what it does. Oh, you see that little shift? It will sometimes mess with the whole image, even though it doesn't really make any sense that it would do that. But if you click this pre-divide post multiply, everything's gonna be okay. Oh yes, pre-divide post multiply, quite interesting. Then I was like, I don't know, this is still maybe just a little bit too sharp. And so I added a little blur, just to kind of diffuse this a little bit. And then I was thinking that if she has sunglasses on, there's gonna be a little shadow under these glasses, like a little shadow on her face. So I just added a drop shadow. This is just a plain old drop shadow, and that really sells it. It just puts a little bit of shadow on her face. And this is not advanced stuff. <laughs> this is just like the default drop shadow, and it works pretty well. I just tweaked the drop distance and the angle a little bit, to be realistic and be kind of under the glasses. And yeah, it works pretty well. Again, all of that is getting ran through our transform, which puts it roughly where it's supposed to be on her face. And then the planar transform, which actually sticks it to her face. Okay. So now here's where we're at. We have the sunglasses and she's moving back and forth and it looks pretty good. If you're just going to do a quick meme or something like that, you could totally just go with this. Like nobody's going to care if there's realistic reflections and stuff in your two second shot it's fine. And probably nobody's going to call you on and be like, wait a minute, I don't think those sunglasses are real. <laughs> Most people aren't going to care or notice. But if you do want to go the extra mile, you can do something like get an image that's kind of roughly what you would think the environment would look like on, you know, behind the camera. If you saw it in the reflection of the sunglasses and do some color correction to it, resize it. By the way, this is kind of stretched out, but I don't really care that much just because it's in a reflection. The right way to do this would be to probably crop this, and resize it and that kind of thing. But I was lazy. I just resized it like this and it kind of squished it down. It's not going to matter that much just because it's a reflection. You won't notice it very much. And then again, roughly putting this where it's supposed to be over her face like that. And we can kind of just paste it over where the sunglasses are, right? So now we have this reflection roughly in place, but we only want the reflection to show up in the lenses of the glasses, right? So what we can do is actually use our blackout for our lenses as a mask. This is what's so cool about nodes is you can use this node that's being merged over other stuff and you can take this and use it as a mask way down here for this merge. And I'm just duplicating the planar transform and the transform that we had for the glasses. And because this background is the same resolution, 1920 by 1080, as our footage and everything, we can apply that planar transform and it's going to perfectly stick that to the glasses. And so we can use this as a mask whoops, for our reflection. And look at that. Oh, baby, we have such a cool reflection now. Now, these look like mirror lenses and they're way too bright. There's a bunch of things wrong with this, but you get the idea, right? So we could take this blend down in our merge and kind of dial that into taste. Maybe it's something more like that, maybe a little more subtle, right? And now we see that reflection and that's not a dead giveaway. <laughs> but one thing that does bother me a little bit, if we were to zoom in here and let's just turn this up so we can see it a little better. If I were to just line this up with the edge of my UI here, check this out. As I play this back, this still in her glasses doesn't move at all, which just ain't that realistic. It would move a little bit because if we look back here, we have sort of a shaky camera. She's riding on the train, the reflection and everything of the train is going up and down. And so it's pretty safe to say that 
the reflection in her glasses would be moving around a little bit too. It wouldn't just be like psh, locked in the center. What I did is went back to my planar tracker and I just tracked something that's kind of moving, not as much as her face, but just the background. And I just made a little selection here, just looking for a little bit of contrast here with these screws and just tracked that and made another planar transform, which is right here and applied that to our still, which makes it move with the train. You get it? You see? So this is moving with the train. Let's just take this mask off and we see it's kind of moving with this window and the train. And that's a close enough movement to be believable, right? And then we just mask that to her lenses and we have a little bit of parallax here in her lenses. It's moving around. It's not just standing still. And then we take this reflection down and we've got a pretty realistic looking reflection in the glasses. Isn't that sweet? So much fun. And the last thing I did is if you have a still and you're just animating a still, check this out. As I go back and forth, there's no real grain. There's nothing, there's no dancing grain here. It might be hard to see on YouTube, but here you can see there is dancing grain. Look at, look at it go. It's like a snowstorm. All right. That's what the footage actually looks like. And so we want to put in some grain that looks similar on these elements that we put in afterwards. There are a lot of ways to do this. One cheap way to do that is just to add the grain over it, right? So we can take some film grain and this is just a plugin inside of Resolve that just generates film grain. And again, it's like, it's close enough. It's not the exact grain, but it's close enough if you just kind of like size it similarly. And I just use this tracked glasses element as a mask for the film grain. And now we have some dancing grain over the glasses as well as the background. And then I can just turn off this grain only. And now we have matched grain on the glasses elements as well as the background. And it's not a dead giveaway because without this grain, this just looks too smooth and perfect. And that's a dead giveaway. It's all about the details. So our finished shot, some fake sunglasses, maybe just a little over the top on the uh, reflection, but I like it. It's fun. Again, if you were trying to be really great, you'd probably get rid of these little reflections here and either just black them out or do a similar thing where you would mask out this part and add a different kind of reflection on the edges. Oh boy, that'd be a fun time. But yeah, that's how you add realistic sunglasses to somebody who does not have sunglasses. Hey, if you're new here, my name's Casey and I teach fusion on the internet. I even have a course that goes into all kinds of little essential tips for working in Fusion, some of which we covered in this video, but some of them are just really good to understand if you're gonna be spending any time in Fusion. It's called the Fusion Survival Guide, and if you click right here, you can get it for free. It's my gift to you just because I think you're cool, and I'm kind of bribing you to spend time with me because I think, I think it'd be really cool if we could hang out and talk about Fusion together. You can get that workshop right here, and there's more visual effects goodness right here. Hey, thanks, you're the best. Have a, have a sweet day. giveaway.